Welcome, my loves. Welcome or welcome back to Chemistry with Kismet Tarot. I'm Monica, the Kismet Chemist. And if you are new to the channel, welcome. I am honored and blessed to have you here. If you are returning, welcome back. I have missed you. So I thought about, um, before we even get into the reading, I thought about blocking off the light. As I was sitting here staring at the sunlight coming in, to me, it looks, first it looked like angel wings. And then as the wind shifted and you can see the shadow of the trees from the window, it actually looks like a bird. And you know, birds are animals that are messengers. They our messengers of the gods. They bring forth what we need to hear at the time we need to hear it. And a lot of the times we can overlook those messages because we either, you know, don't know the symbolism or, you know, we see birds all the time and we just don't think like, hmm, I wonder what that means. For instance, when I was down in Florida and even here, when I'm back home, a lot of the time I see hawks, hawks all the time. Um, and, you know, seeing it maybe once or twice would be easy to be like, okay, it's no big deal. It's just a hawk. Instead, it's like, okay, it's a repetitive thing. I'm seeing it continually. What does it mean? Now I know the spiritual meaning, you know, it's a higher perspective, a higher view, but a hawk is a bird of prey. So they see, they, they elevate above to see what it is that they are hunting or what it is that they want, what it is that they're desiring. And they'll circle around it and then they will dive for it. And the last time I saw a hawk, it literally had it's prey in its beak. This to me is a spirit really speaking very strongly that when you focus and you take aim at the object of your desire, at what your heart and your soul are speaking to you to get, to grasp, to bring into your life, manifest, however it is that it presents itself to you, when you do this, when you get it in your sights, you need to trust that higher perspective of it and know that you are the bird of prey and your prey is significantly smaller than you. All you have to do is be willing to take the dive. And that's that very full energy, Uranus energy, jump, leap, take the Take the chance, take that and go for it. And that to me was one of the biggest reasons why I didn't want to change anything about the setup because, you know, sometimes we can be perfectionist. We can want to have everything appear exactly as we think we need to appear. And when we do that, we close off outside possibility for something more. I sat here for over an hour, pulling cards, channeling messages, talking about the new moon in Virgo that is happening today as I'm filming. And when I finished my recording and I went to go start the editing process, it had recorded one second. Just one, one second. In the past, when that would happen, I'd get really frustrated. I, I would feel defeated. I'd be like, oh no, what's going on? Now I'm like, okay, well, you know what? There's this and this and this going on. And it's just technology going haywire. I can change this. But what is the deeper issue here? What is the deeper message? What is the deeper meaning to this moment in time. 
Today is the, the new moon in Virgo, and I had intended to come here and break down the charts for you guys and break down the energies for you guys. And there's plenty of people out there doing it, but I have been having technology concerns for a good two weeks. Why that is, is because Mercury is now in the pre-shadow phase and is gearing up to go retrograde. And when Mercury goes retrograde, we have issues with technology. The reason why we have issues with technology is Mercury is closer to Earth during the retrograde phases. And that means that Mercury is teaching us deeper lessons about communication. Mercury going retrograde in Libra and Virgo, the communicative messages are literally how we speak about self-care and self-love and health and nurturing and what we've learned of doing these things for ourselves in our partnerships, in our relationships, in our interpersonal relationships, how we bring balance to what we need on a open communicative platform level with the people in our lives by understanding what it is that we truly need. Instead of being reactive, we start speaking truths from a place of authenticity, a place of balance, a place of harmony. So all of these are all messages that are just coming through as I'm staring at the movement of the sunlight on this mat on my desk. And while I had intended originally on talking about the new moon in Virgo, I want to talk about Mercury. I want to talk about communication. I want to talk about how we talk to ourselves because it's that inner dialogue that's really being so greatly highlighted right now. And with so many planets retrograded, all of those retrograde energies are really pulling us internally. They're pulling us into ourselves to really get to the deeper portions of the way that we communicate with ourselves. No matter what planet it is, what it stands for, or what sign it's in, they all want us to understand that communication is the foundation of the world that we live in. It's the foundation of the human experience. It, emotions and communication are really our foundations. <laughs> and I, I apologize if you guys can hear Willow and Bella. She's getting all rambunctious because she gets really excited with kitties. Um, but I don't want to stop them from playing. But... <laughs> When we think about what the human experience really is, just the act of thinking is in, in essence communicating. It's communicating with our heart, communicating with our soul, communicating with our mind, and finding out through those active communication styles what we think of our experience here in the world. Now, as I was preparing for the, the new moon reading, I was setting out these cards and the nine of pentacles came out. And the nine of pentacles is a card that talks about creating your own wealth, creating your own abundance, being fruitful and successful and independent on your own. A lot of the world focuses on prosperity, on money, on what that means in terms of abundance and what that means in terms of status and worth and emotions. But I want you to think of the pentacles more along the lines of the gifts that you have that are here to be seated and shared with the world. See, and there's a dog and a cat in here. And they're both communicating in their own unique way. I'm just going to let them go. 
Hey, hello. Hey, little baby. Getting all that on chips. She's like, Mom, I just, I, I just want to play with the cat. I'm going to take a break and let them play. Okay, guys, I'm back. I just set them free from my office so they can go run around through the house. They love doing that. The cats always take a while to adjust to the, uh, to having a new puppy or, you know, they tend to be fairly tolerant. Winifred, not so much. She's a little bit grumpy with me because we have a puppy again. But that's the thing. When you think about a dog and a cat, you would think that they speak a different language, but at the same time, they do seem to understand each other. Just like animals understand us, plants understand us. If we can communicate with plants, if we can communicate with animals, if animals can communicate interspecies, what is stopping us from communicating with the divine? What is stopping us from communicating truth with ourselves? I don't know. It just, there's, there's so much energy right now about how we, how we speak, how we talk to each other, how we talk to ourselves, what we say, what matters, what matters. We've got temperance. And the Knight of Swords, which is rapid communication. But temperance is all about the blending of. It's, it's the, the card of alchemy, the card of mixing two things. In this deck, I love this temperance card because it's the sun and the moon. And that really is, in essence, even though they're on opposite hands, so you could see it as a full moon, it is the essence of a new moon energy. A new moon energy is the energy of the sun and the moon blended together. That is us blending our emotions with who we are, with how we share ourselves. It's, it's giving us the opportunity to understand the nature of light and darkness, of, of our inner world and our outer world, of our emotions and our way forward and learning how to really bring forth those pieces of ourselves by blending them together, by mixing them together, by creating something profound in sharing our emotions, embracing our emotions, shining our emotions. It's, it's like I say about empaths. Empaths can go through these moments where they want to shut down their emotions so much because it can be so overwhelming, but that's where the superpower is, is in your emotions. Your emotions tell you so much and your emotions are the heart, the center, the core of the human experience. And it's through communicating those things with the outside world that we are able to share our our human experience with others, how we're able to learn about all the different facets of what it means to be human in the world, what it means to be a divine being within this physical realm, because we can talk to each other about our experiences, about our emotions, about our understanding and our awareness. When we're working with energy, when we're working with e even planetary energy, we're working with lessons in the sky, huge archetypal teachers that are, we've got the tower and the magician, that are teaching us about what we believe, but also about history, mythology, the skies, the patterns, the cycles, teaching us about the things that we build our foundations on, our beliefs upon, and the things that aren't reflective of the truth of who we are. Sometimes we get 
to be incredibly patient and incredibly centered and grounded. And when you get into that state, it can be hard to take action forward. I've been in that place before where I've been like, okay, I'm ready to rest. And then I, I rest for a while and I realize how long it's been since I rested. And then I don't want to continue moving forward. But at some point, the pressure of needing to move forward gets to be too much. And then it feels like a tower moment. Like, where do I move? What do I do? We can get so caught up in our own minds, our own heads. And the magician card here, first of all, the magician is Mercury energy. So Mercury is, I mean, Mercury is really working on us right now too. There are so many planets in the skies that are just so hyper amplified, it's outrageous. But the tower card has been this repeating theme. I've been, I just recently did a tower video And it's going to have a second part in time. But the magician right now is, to me, it's Mercury saying the towers that are falling is all about communication. It's about how we communicate, how we move forward. I'm hearing Sagittarius and taking aim and focusing on beliefs. But this is internal beliefs. Spirit, what else do we have? We've got the three of ones. Okay, so this is this is all about the beliefs surrounding the future, and then four of swords on the back. So, like I said, sometimes you go into a rest state, but this is our beliefs about the future. If it's the future of humanity or the future of our our personal life or the future for me, I'm a mom. It's the future of my children. So often. And I, I sit and think about my role in, in that situation, my role as a mom, my role here for you as a reader, as a teacher, as a guide, as a healer, my role as a friend, as a daughter, as a sister, as a granddaughter, all of these roles, these labels, these places that we are put into in our lives because of how we have structured life. And I always think about how all of this impacts where I'm going and what I'm working towards. Sometimes we get so caught up in the the labels and expectations or perceived expectations that we miss the point of the experience of this life. We want to be perfect. We want to do things right. We want to know that we're on the right path. We want to have this and have that. But what if we had everything that we think that we want, but you still can't understand and communicate your emotions. You still don't understand your soul. You still don't understand your purpose. You just have all of the the things that you think that you want. We have to understand ourselves. And that's a hard thing to do. It it can be a challenge. Sometimes we get stuck in looking towards the future. And I'm I'm seeing somebody like standing with a telescope, staring out at the ocean with the telescope as though as though they'll be able to see a ship coming in enough advance to be able to intercept the ship. But if you think about a lighthouse, a lighthouse doesn't sit there waiting for the ships to come. A lighthouse shines its light whether the ships come or not because that's its purpose. That's what it's here to do. It shines its light out into the ocean and it provides that light for the passing ships. They work together, but they are still separate. They, and that's how we're meant to work with the world, to be of the world, but not, or to be in the world, but to be not of it. As in, we work with the world, but we're supposed to remember what we are in essence. We're supposed to know that 
we're here to shine a light. And those ships will come when they come. They they will pass when they pass. And this isn't always necessarily for those like me who are content creators. This can be for anything. This can be for someone looking for love. This can be someone looking for a new job or someone looking for their soul family or someone looking for understanding, someone looking for awareness and help and guidance. All of these things that you could be searching for, you have to trust that no matter what, it's going to come in. And would it help you or harm you to see in advance it coming? Because if you trust that it's coming, then you don't need to continue looking for it. When you stop looking for what you're hoping for, wishing for, dreaming for, then you learn a sense of detachment. And it doesn't mean you don't care. It doesn't mean it's not important to you. Detachment is not about being like, it's not about separation. It's not like I'm going to, I'm seeing somebody fishing. And you know, when you fish, you cast. And then you sit. And, and if you're using a bobber, you wait until the bobber gets pulled down. If you trust that you have put the lure on the hook properly, that you are fishing in the right area, and you just know that you're going to catch something, then it doesn't become this overly stressful moment of sitting there and going, when is the fish going to bite? When is the fish going to bite? When is the fish going to bite? What you do is you sit there and you listen to the wind in the trees and the sound of the water, and you get in touch with the things all around you because you know and you trust that the fish that you're aiming for is going to come in. All right, let's get a little bit a little bit more. This is really not the reading I expected to do this morning, but you know, sometimes I like how there's that saying rejection is um divine protection. But sometimes rejection like for instance if something goes wrong technologically, sometimes it's more of divine redirection. Instead of protection, sometimes it's like, while this was a path, I want you to go down this direction. It's an offshoot. It's the same, but different. I'm still touching all the same energies, but the message is a bit different. No, it just, it was like, I, I needed to wait and see what, deeper purpose I had today for reading for you guys. I knew I was here to read, but that's what I needed to do. So we have the card 34 with universal light, the card 20 with play. And on the back of the deck, we have the card 20 with loved ones in spirit. Oh, sorry, guys. My nose itched tremendously all of a sudden. Oh, okay. So what this is telling me is, <clears throat> first of all, let's talk about universal light. When I said that I was still picking up all of the same energies, that is, first of all, the confirmation, this universal light. But this is exactly like the image of the lighthouse. It, it The light shines. It doesn't matter what planet is within its proximity. It doesn't matter whether there are asteroids passing by or comets passing by. It just is. Your light is not based on who it shines upon. It is based off of the fact that it is your light. And with loved ones in spirit, I'm seeing dragonflies on this card and feathers. And this, again, talks goes back to the messengers, birds as messengers, insects, animals, all of these different ways in which 
those that we love, our guides, our our loved ones who have passed over from this life, even those from past past lives who didn't incarnate in this incarnation. Angels, archangels, ascended masters, and just spirit as a whole sends all of these messages here to remind you that you have a light within you, that your light is meant to shine, and that your worth is determined based off of you, not based off of who the light hits, when it hits them, how many people or things or beings it hits, because your light is you. You are light. You are the universal light that is here to shine in the world. You're the lighthouse, which means that when the ships come, they will come because just like a moth is attracted to a flame, a ship is attracted to the light of the lighthouse because they work together. They collaborate together to do their own thing, but they still work together. Play is telling me that some of us, a lot of us, myself included, need to remember what it is like to have fun with what we do. To, to experience the essence of play. And this, again, was another message that I got in the reading that I tried to do earlier, which was all about, you know, learning how to give to your inner child, how to free yourself from the, the things that you were conditioned to believe and think about yourself and let yourself just have fun. I forget Sometimes I forget when I structure my readings and have a very firm purpose and narrow everything down, I forget how much fun it is for me to just sit here and let the messages go through me and let the cards fall and watch as it all falls together and blends together and flows together the way that it does when you're working with spirit because it is so unbelievably magical. It is so magical and it is so fun. And when you bring that into the things that you do, you elevate the things that you do into a state of just innocent, carefree fun. And fun is a word that fun and play are words that we associate with doing certain things. But their emotions, their emotions, what is the emotion of play? What do you think about when you think of the emotion of play? How can you incorporate that more into what you do? How can you think about your loved ones in spirit if you're struggling with something like this and allow it to be something more carefree, something more open so that you learn how to move with your spirit and with others and with your light without it being this heavy burden. Some of you just simply need to take a step back and and rest. And normally with the four of swords cards, it's like a meditation card. That's what it speaks about. And that's really funny because the seven of wands is underneath it. And the seven of wands in this deck to me is always about meditation. But this four of swords, she has a nest and she is so comfortable. It's, it could be seen as your home, but it's more about the comfort found within the things that you've built, the way in which you have healed yourself and sewn your heart together and really surrounded yourself with what brings you comfort and knowing that it's okay to take a break and do the things that make you feel comforted. For me, when I do the things that make me feel comforted, I engage more in this play energy. I dance around the kitchen and I go swing on the swing set at my son's school or You know, I joke around with my husband, like we're like teenagers a lot of the time, just because that's the energy that we have together. We have this just playful energy. 
this world can be heavy. The messages can be heavy. The energy can be heavy. And our loved ones want us to understand that. Spirit wants us to understand that they know that. But you have this beautiful light within you, this beautiful, like, childlike light within you. And it's not about, it's not about not being worthy. It's not about not being childish. It's not about needing to grow up and needing this or that. It's about knowing that all things, all experiences are part of what we're doing here. And in order to have the fullness of the human experience, we have to blend it all together. It can be scary. Like, especially in Virgo energy. Virgo wants to be so logical, pragmatic about things. Analytical, not necessarily pragmatic. Sometimes, yes. But analytical, for sure. They want practical steps for how to do this. What if there's no practical steps? Like, go for a walk. Go for a walk and see what happens. For me, I take a shower. I call it my epiphany shower. Like, that's just what happens. Why it happens? I don't know. I mean, I could try and explain it all. I could find plenty of spiritual reasons, but I just, I prefer knowing that that's how it works and then just allowing, allowing it to happen. And it's fun and it's playful. You know, we're told not to take this world too seriously. I get why. Because when we take everything so seriously, we take ourselves too seriously. And then we, we allow ourselves to be completely consumed and encumbered by the heaviness instead of allowing ourselves to understand that there's another element essence of who we are and what is going on. We're here for a short time, but this isn't all there is. And I apologize that the, the video and, and sound are kind of off kilter. Like I said, technology issues, Mercury is going into retrograde. It's just kind of like get prepared for it, get ready for it. Um, okay, that one wanted to come out. You've got crystal ball and clarity. Oh, thank you. That's phenomenal. Crystal ball and clarity to me is saying that if you, if you surrender to these moments, these moments of play, these moments of, okay, technology isn't working, so I'm just going to put it away and I'm going to go do something else. That's when clarity is going to come in and it's going to be like a flash of lightning. The thing about this lightning is it's moving up. It's not moving down. And then it's got this, mo this here, and it is actually really reflective of this un universal light. If you let yourself take some time out and just engage in things that you're not used to, like me sitting here and, and showing you guys the light and just getting the messages from that, I never thought I would be doing that, but it worked. It, it just, it was a new way of doing it. It was really fun for me. I really enjoyed it. But it was a moment in which something as simple as the reflection of light on a table Help me remember all the ways in which spirit speaks, not just to me, but to all of us, all the ways in which our light shines out into the world, all of the ways in which we are connected in so many different ways to the animal kingdom, to the plant kingdom, to the ground and the stones and the crystals, to each other, to mother nature, to phenomena to the heavens and the, and the spirit realm, we're all so connected. And so if we're all so connected and there's all this heaviness and this struggle, the more of us who understand that we shine this light out and that we can gain clarity in a multitude of ways and we play with life, we dance with life, we enjoy life and we commune with the spirit world while also understanding that we have all the resources that we need in our lives to blend it all together and create whatever we want to create because we are essentially creators in human form. When we understand all of this and we engage in this 
joyful, abundant, playful energy. And we bring that forth in everything that we do, not in not in a means of trying to impress someone or trying to get something from something or anything like that, but we're just sitting there and doing that. That alleviates so much of the heaviness because now we're just engaging in it. We're just having fun. We're sitting down and we're having fun. I know so many times people come to readings and they come to readings and they're looking for something. They're looking for this clarity because you've forgotten that you have a universal light. And yeah, I could be shooting myself in the foot, but in reality, I'm still going to be sitting here doing this because this is something that I enjoy, <laughs> that I have fun with. Even when the messages are heavy, I still have fun because I know the heavy messages are so important. I know that the joyful, light, fun messages are so important. I know the importance of both. It's just like the sun and the moon, the emotions and the mind and the experience and the fullness of everything. Everything matters and nothing matters all at the same time. But the more of us, who decide, okay, I'm going to take care of myself and I am going to forget about all the chaos and the mayhem. And I'm not going to engage in the same things that everybody is engaging in because all that does is add one more to the melee that drags it down. But instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have fun and share that fun and show people what it's like to experience it, because when you experience it, it makes so much of a difference in your life. So they know that they can do it too. Sometimes what we perceive as rejection, it's not a mistake and it isn't actually protection. It's just redirecting us to what we need to do instead. That's what this whole message was in just all sorts of ways. So if this resonated, please hit the like button, share it out with somebody who could use the messages. I want to say thank you so much for being here. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell so you get notified every time I upload a video. And thank you so much, Spirit, for the redirection today because this was a great reading. And I am really, really, I'm just very happy <laughs> with, with how things worked out in this way. So thank you so much, spirit. My heart is so appreciative and thank you, you guys for being here. Don't forget to check out the description box. There's links to my books on Amazon. There are links to donate to my channel. Every donation is so deeply appreciated and really helps contribute to the channel. So on that note, I am going to go and do some things that are fun for me. So I love you all. Bye.